Good evening, my dear students and friends. Myself, Dr. Ravi Kant Pathak, and I'm going to start your video lecture class. In the last video lecture, we have discussed about the different excretory products and organism. And today, I will start new topic of this chapter, and the name of the topic is, you can say, about the uh, kidney structure and function as well as excretory organ. So today we will talk about the kidney structure and function and excretory organ. So now we are going to discuss about the detailed excretory organ because you have to see from uh, from phylum protozoa means phylum protozoa poriferous latrita up to the cardita. Every individuals they have the different different uh, different different excretory organ. So here they have given the some examples and their excretory organs. So first of all, we, we generally see about the platy helminthes. So platy helminthes because excretory organs only have started from the platy helminthes. So platy helminthes basically planaria. Planaria they have the protonephridia or flame cells or solenocytes. So this is considered as a excretory organ. This excretory organ found in the phylum platy helminthes. A phylum Anelida, Anelida that is the earthworm. So Anelida earthworm, they have the excretory organ which is known as the nephridia. And in case of the insects, small pigeon tubules, you, we have already studied in about the uh, anatomy of the cockroach. So we have to see excretory organ which is found as a small pigeon tubules. Okay. Another prawn. So prawn, they have the prawn also known as the crustacean. So prawn. They have the antenal glands or green glands which involves in the excretion phenomenon. Another is the vertebrate. So vertebrate have the well-developed kidney. And you have to see there is also three different types of the kidney in case of the vertebrate. First is the pro, uh, pro-nephric and there is the mesonephric and another is the metanephric. So basically humans, that is the mammals. So humans, basically mammals, they have the metanephric kidney. So mammals, birds and reptiles. So these three have the metanephric kidney. So now in Ascaris, in Ascaris that is the nematode. So nematodes, they have the H-shaped excretory organ. They have the H-shaped excretory organ, which is also known as the renate cells are generally found. So they have the renate cell or H-shaped excretory organ, which is generally found. In case of the molluscan, so molluscan, there is the kidney. In case of the molluscan, so they have the kidney or organs of bojanus, that kidney also known as the organ of bojanus and excretory product, they release the guanine and example is the union. So we have already studied in the last video lecture about the uh, guanine, different different excretory products on the basis of excretory products, the organism divided and the different names like ureotelic, amanotelic, aminotelic and uh, uricotelic, so guanotelic that uh, have given. Now next what we will see, next that is the uh, structure, structure of the uh, kidney. So here you can say, uh, before a structure, so you can see about the exact location of the kidney because the human, we are going to discuss about the human kidney. So where it generally located. So here you can see, uh, they have the human excretory organs, basically kidney, they have the four important things. So each of the four important thing, first is the a pair of kidney, that is the two, two is only found, it is found in pair form. So a pair of kidney, a pair of ureters, so this have given the figure of ureters, and then urinary bladder. So here, this is the one urinary bladder and one ureter. Means two, one pair of the kidney, one pair of the ureters, and then urinary bladder and urethra. So this figure have given, so we can see, this is inferior vena cava. We know very well. So uh, in inferior and superior vena cava, they carry the uh, impure blood from the different uh, part, different body parts from lower as well as upper and open in, into the opens it opens into the right atrium. So now here they have given. So it generally opens into the right auricle or atrium. After that, it will reach into the left, uh, sorry, right ventricle, and they pass through the different different things. So now here you can say, uh, this is the uh, superior vena cava, or, uh, sorry, this is the inferior vena cava, and here they have given about the uh, adrenal gland at the uh, kidney, at the kidney, uh, above the surface of kidney, they have the small 
structure dome shaped structure which is known as the adrenal gland and this adrenal gland also involves to secretion of the different hormones so we will discuss later another is the renal uh, renal artery so renal artery you can say artery always carry the pure blood so here they have given the renal artery it provide the blood to the kidney and they have also renal vein so renal vein always carry impure blood from the kidney okay. and then also have given the kidney this is the structure of kidney and uh, this is the dorsal aorta and this is the ureter and kidney also have divided into two different region outer region is called the cortex and inner region is called the medulla and there is the pelvis region so there is the bulges region which is known as the pelvis okay so these have given about the kidney and the urinary bladder and ultimately urethra so this is the structure uh, uh, structure that means location location of the kidney and now we will see the exact position so here they have uh, described where exact position the kidney are dark red bean shaped organs they saying kidney is the bean shaped you have to eat the bean so bean shaped structure uh, organs about 10 to 12, 12 cm long so 10 to 12 cm means you have to see in a small scale that is the uh, small scale so up to the 15 cm so less than 3 cm means you can say approximately small cell size small scale size their length and uh, uh, this is the uh, about a centimeter long and 5 cm wide so their wideness is 5 to 7 cm and 2 to 3 cm their thickness each weight about the kidney 120 to 170 g so their weight is the 120 to 170 g they are placed against the back wall of the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm it is saying they are placed against the back wall which it means it is not located some people they are understanding kidney located to front this is located to back side against they have given the placed against the back wall of the abdominal cavity this is the abdominal cavity front is the abdominal cavity and back so back side this kidney located Uh, just below the diaphragm and it is below the diaphragm one uh, one on either side opposite the last thoracic and first third uh, first three lumbar vertebrae so we have to see uh, we know very well about the thoracic uh, vertebrae so vertebrae have the 26 bones in which seventh are the cervical vertebrae 12th are the thoracic vertebrae and five is the lumbar vertebrae and one is the sacrum another is the coccyx so it means you can say 26 different vertebrae only found 26 in number now uh, in case of the 26 so where is exactly located this kidney so this kidney located in the t12 means thoracic vertebrae 12 and lumbar vertebrae third in between it is located so first third uh, first uh, last thoracic vertebrae means t12 and first three first three lumbar lumbar vertebrae in this uh, position it is located in the back side So this is the location of the kidney. Now uh, in man uh, left kidney, so there is also describing in man left kidney occurs. Left kidney occurs at slightly higher level uh, than right one. So it is saying the left kidney occurs slightly higher level. Why? Why it is found higher level? Because because right side has the prominent right liver lobe. Means uh, right liver lobe is enlarged, and due to this. they have the uh, they uh, generally push they generally push to the uh, right side kidney so due to this left kidney occurs slightly higher level than the right one in mammals the kidney is convo convo convex convo convex means if you will see the structure of the kidney suppose that this is the uh, structure of the kidney i am going to draw it. so here you can see this is the structure of the kidney if you will see so they have the two region one is the convex region and another is the concave region so that's why it is saying about the concave convex concave convex means one reason they have the convex another reason is the concave the center of the concave inner surface is called the hilum if you will see we will see later about the structure of the uh, kidney so here saying uh, uh, concave inner surface is called as hilum it is called generally the hilum concavity if you have if you will see the structure of the uh, kidney so there is the concavity and this concavity structure is known as the hilum and hilus which is gives out a ureter they from hilus is the place from where ureters comes out ureters comes out from this hilus surface 
the renal artery enters into the kidney because we have to see in different renal artery renal veins so renal artery enters through this hilus region and the renal veins comes out renal veins also comes out and renal nerves also enter into the kidney now the kidney are covered by the peritoneum what is the peritoneum that is the siloam so kidney are covered by the siloam on the front ventral side means they have the the you can say peritoneum walls only found and they in front uh, means ventral side they covered with the siloam and siloam only the front side thus they are retroperitoneal in position retroperitoneal means that is the space anatomical space in the abdominal cavity this is the anatomical space in the abdominal cavity behind the peritoneum means uh, in uh, behind the siloam behind the siloam they have the some space anatomical space they have given the behind the siloam it have the anatomical space in the abdominal cavity means front is the front you can say front lies the abdomen and behind that is the retroperitoneum in this retroperitoneum so they is only found so kidney generally found so retroperitoneum position generally kidney found so this have given now next we will see the uh, here structure of the kidney now next next one is the detail about the kidney structure the kidney are metanephric i had already told about the this uh, uh, metanephric mesonephric and pro nephric so the kidney are metanephric in mammals birds and reptiles whereas other lower vertebrates have the pro nephric or mesonephric types of kidney the kidney is divisible into two parts outer is called the cortex and inner is the medulla very simple you have already studied in the 10th standard the renal pyramids are medullary medullary pyramids so there is the one thing which is known as the renal pyramids are medullary pyramids what is this the medulla is the subdivided into 8 to 12 sorry 8 to 18 the medulla is further means medulla is subdivided into 8 to 18 conical masses conical masses means like this you can say like this structure so this is a conical so this is the conical okay so conical masses saying 8 to 18 conical masses and the renal the renal pyramid here saying the renal pyramid each having the broad base towards the cortex and a narrow end called the renal papilla towards the pelvis reason okay if you if you are not understanding so we will just uh, uh, later we will see the detailed structure of the kidney so that's time you can understand it is saying towards the because we have to see kidney have the two different reason okay outer is the cortex and inner is the medulla so here saying uh, towards the cortex region towards the cortex region they have the broad structure means here like this so cortex region they have like this structure broad so broad region and medulla so uh, and narrow narrow generally found towards the renal papillae or medulla so towards the pelvis region if you can say towards the pelvis region they have the narrow so now we will see next next here you can see this is the detailed structure of the kidney and uh, you can easily understand with the help of this figure so firstly it is saying they have the two different reason outer reason so outer reason you can say cortex and inner inner reason is called the medulla so firstly here you can say this is the renal cortex this is the renal cortex and here they have the uh, this is structure also known as the renal capsule this is the structure outer covering of the cortex which is known as the renal capsule and this structure is known as the pyramid in renal medulla so this is the renal medulla now you have to see this is the broader region located towards the cortex and papillae papillae located towards the pelvis it is located towards the pelvis region so here they have in the pelvis region and this is the pelvis okay hilum this is the you can say hilum what is the hilum hilum is by the ureter uh, arise and uh, renal artery enters and renal uh, uh, veins comes outside and uh, uh, different veins so renal veins also enters okay so this is the hilum and pelvis this is the reasons from where the different uh, uh, this pelvis and renal veins are uh, everything arise okay so now here they have in the this is the renal cortex and this structure this is the structure is known as the renal papillae so renal papillae is the narrow and uh, here this is the broad and uh, here this is called the this structure is also called the column of burdini you will see so they have given they have given the name so this is called the renal column or column of burdini so this have given 
now and uh, another one so this is the renal artery which uh, carry the pure blood and open into the kidney and this is the hilum hilum is the notch notch sorry not notch it means concavity cavity cavity means that is the uh, inside the cavity cavity like structure which is known as the hilum and this is the renal vein and this is the renal pelvis and this is the ureter which arise from and here they also two region one is the major calyx and another is the minor calyx so this is the major this is the minor calyx and when minor calyx combined with this they form the major calyx okay so this is the detailed structure of the kidney so here you can see now we will see next that is the renal columns of kidney we have to see about the renal medulla and the papillae so now in between two different papillae so two different papillae they have the renal columns of kidney so that is called renal columns of kidney so between the pyramids we have to see like this structure between the pyramids it is saying the between the pyramids the cortex extend into the medulla or renal column of the kidney so in cortex region they can also extend like this structure they can also extends like this structure so this is generally called the this is generally called the column of kidney another one so another one is the calyx so calyx here you can see each renal papilla projects into the cavity of a minor calyx we have to know very well i had already told minor calyx this is the minor calyx and these minor calyx will combine minor calyx join to form major calyx and this is the renal pap papilla projects into the cavity of a minor calyx means renal papilla they will combine and uh, projects projects means uh, that is the bulges projects into the cavity of minor calyx it means it opens towards the minor calyx and the major calyx open into a wide funnel like structure that is known as the pelvis so this is the wide funnel like structure which is known as the pelvis and the latter leads to the ureter means after that pelvis pelvis opens into the ureter so this is the uh, uh, combination means firstly you can say papilla will combine open into the papilla projects and open into the minor calyx then major calyx then ureter and ultimately uh, they opens into the ureter now histologically a kidney is made up if you will see the structure of the kidney inside so they have the uh, millions of the nephron that is uh, a kidney is made up of the innumerable innumerable thin long and much convoluted tubular structure which is known as the uriniferous tubules or nephron this is known as the uriniferous tubules or nephron and nephron is the considered as a structural and functional unit of kidney and one human kidney may contain about 1 million nephron i had already told 1 million means 10 lakh nephron generally found in the kidney and this is the structural and functional unit of the kidney now pathway of the urinary output or drainage so urinary drainage here you can say firstly collecting duct collecting ducts means uh, in case of the uh, nephron so they have the pct then dct and between loop of la and ultimately opens into the collecting duct so collecting ducts these collecting ducts opens through the papillary duct in the renal pyramid and then form the minor calyx then major calyx the renal pelvis and urinary bladder so this is the way this is the pathway by which it uh, comes outside so this is collecting duct after that it form the papillary duct we have to see collecting duct then papillary duct papillary duct form the minor calyx then major calyx then renal pelvis after that it will open into the urinary blood so this is the pathway by which uh, uh, urine comes outside now we will see the difference between afferent arteriole and efferent artery afferent means which is the carry the blood uh, pure blood sorry uh, yes so carry the blood and opens into both are the arterioles so artery are which carry the pure blood so this is the uh, afferent arteriole which enters inside the renal uh, enters inside the kidney that is called afferent and which is uh, comes outside the kidney so that is called the uh, efferent okay afferent afferent enters and efferent comes outside so here you can say afferent arteriole first property so formed by the branching of renal artery so it generally forms by the branching of renal artery and is forms by the joining to glomerulus capillaries if you see in the glomerulus region so the glomerulus region this glomerulus region this glomerulus region so there is the i will change the color so you can easily understand so there is the two different types of the uh, 
uh, renal vein and renal artery so they opens like this if you see this is the afferent this is the afferent and this is the efferent you can say this is the efferent and this is the afferent artery you okay now you can say it is its lumen is twice as thick that of the efferent artery means you can say they have the wide lumen they have the wide lumen by which they can much supply the blood and here its lumen is the twice as narrow and that of the afferent artery means efferent artery their lumen is the very narrow due to this they create the pressure gradients by which filtration easily takes place inside the glomerulus region so brings oxygenated blood into the kidney and here they carry both are here oxygenated blood is also carried also carry but it brings oxygenated blood into the kidney and carries oxygenated blood away from the bowman capsule from the bowman capsule it's only away brings blood which contains large amount of water and nitrogenous metabolic waste because this is the carrying the blood and it will a large amount of water as well as nitrogen metabolic wastes everything it have and by which it opens so here they can it carries away blood that is relatively thicker and free toxic waste it means if we compare the afferent arterial blood and efferent arterial blood so efferent artery there is the less toxicity because glomerulus filtration one time they have already filtered divides to form the glomerulus which is not inside the bowman capsule this glomerulus region at the glomerulus region it will uh, re, uh, reached or arrived after that they form knot like structure means they form the knot like structure and which form the structure which is known as the bowman capsule and here divides to form the vas erecti means from the bowman capsule they arise glomerulus region they arise and after that they form the vas erecti and this vas erecti uh, enveloping the renal tubule so this vas erecti enveloping the renal tubules okay so uh, this is the difference between afferent and efferent artery okay so uh, now thank you for uh, watching and share subscribe and hit the bell icon for regular updates so thank you again